Hey, what's going on, people? So it's Friday. I'm just going to take a little 10 minutes off of my current day job so I can make this video for those people who are interested in knowing how to pass the AZ500. And I'm going to talk to you in this video more or less of the materials I use to pass the exam, um, how long it took, you know, basically the things to look out for within the current exam. And, you know, basically my feelings around the whole thing so that you can pass. But before I do and before I shout out about my own self and victories, you know, let's shout out about somebody else. Let me introduce you here to Edward Wilkins. I hope I pronounced your name properly. Edward, my man. Edward has watched my YouTube videos and basically he found them inspirational to carry on on his journey. He's just recently passed his MS 900. So, you know, he's going to do, so what's that? The Zero Fundamentals for 365, I think. And then he's on to SC 900, which I think if I do a little quick Google here, it's the Microsoft Security Compliance Identity. So fundamentals. So he's pretty good. Edward, my man, hope to see you do the AZ500. I know that you got it in you to pass. So, but, you know, oh, I did a little snort there. <laughs> How embarrassing. Ooh. Anyway, I'm not going to edit that out. Deal with it. Edward, pass the next exam. And, you know, hopefully we'll see you on the top lead board, something of the sort. But, you know, thanks for giving me a shout out. Thanks for find, finding my videos inspirational. Thank you for sharing, my man. So let's go for the AZ500 and let me show you what content I use to pass and basically to share on with yourselves. So I quickly go to a respectful browser, Bing, and I just type in AZ500. Now, the thing is, is that you need to have, or you should have a Microsoft Hotmail account and the reason why I say that is so that you can actually keep track of the free online material that Microsoft offers. So I'm using the Microsoft free content and in here we'll basically have um, the capability of tracking whatever is new or should I say what you've completed and then when they have updated it, they will it'll be easy for you to see what has changed so that you can actually revise of the changes that are in there so that when it comes to the top up or refresh or renew exam, you know, it's top of your head, really. Um, I went through each and every single module. I think this probably took me something like a month to do with dedication of like waking up at 4.30 in the morning, did two hours every day and you know went through each and every single module and the good thing about actually the microsoft course material is this you get labs you can you know some of the modules do have labs in them that you can actually um get a little bit of hands-on experience you know and you can actually see for sure how it works somewhat in the real world of how to configure i don't know like vnets nsgs all these sort of things so one of the things I want to point out here is, is that on Tuesday, if you're in the UK, so after your bank holiday weekend, guess what? The exam has been updated once again. I don't know about you, but these things keep changing so much. And it's, it's a real job and I have to actually keep up with it. You know, I feel, I feel as though that Microsoft should probably pay us a few pounds or so, so that we can actually feel more inspired to keep up with the technology because it's changing so much. Anyway, that's just me being selfish. Back in room. So this is what I've actually done to pass, pass this. It took me about a month, two months. Went through each and every single module, dissect it, read it, you know, got to grips with it. If you've got about six months um, experience with Azure and you've done things like with key vaults, with VNets, with NSGs, any of those sort of fundamental things when it comes to security, because those are also security topologies as well. This, you know, should be a breeze for you to do. So the second item that I want to point to you about is WizLabs. So with WizLabs, it's really good course material additive for you to have because with WizLabs, the, the questions that you're being asked in this content in their you know practice test exams are not brain dumps right and let me just 
let me just emphasize on that. It's really important that you don't brain dump on these exams. Reason being is because then your your certificate is just the worth as paper that's printed on if you're going to friggin' print it. No one prints it these days. Remember those days where you used to pass these exams and get like your cert in post? Well, those days are done. You download it and print it. Anyway, the point being is, is that don't, don't do the brain dumps. Don't just pass the exams for passing sake. You know, I'm hearing or seeing people on the Reddit who do exams like 12, 13 in a year and stuff like that. You're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing your company a disservice by not actually sitting down and studying the material properly. So study the material. And talking about studying material, let me show you the advantage of using WizLab. So I'm showcasing their free tests. Um, well, I'm not gonna show you all the exams, all the, all the questions here, but I'm just gonna show you the example. And you know, you can re press pause, read it, guess a question before I actually show you. And the answer is yes, question is, you know, selection C. The great thing about Wiz Labs is, is that it does tell you the Microsoft reason as to why that question is the correct one. And it also gives you a Microsoft URL for you to click so that you can actually go and read up more in depth about that question. So there you go. You know, we've covered everything that I've used in preparing for this exam. It took me to yeah, give it a month, two months. On month two, I sat, sat the exam after just reading everything that I could possibly can on it by going doing the modules, the syllabus, and by doing Wiz Labs. Um, what was the exam like for me? It was it was okay, you know. I mean, we got things like privileged identity management. That was new for me, uh, new topic that I picked up. It was talking about security center. I've deployed that many times. So that was not anything too scary about. Um, what else? It was like, you know, VNets, like if you like networking still, you know, I come from an infrastructure background. So like networking was easy for me to grasp and everything of the sort. But I understand like NSG, you know, um, what do you say, block imports, open imports, all these sort of things. Those were the challenges from law. I see a lot of people on Reddit actually being challenged about. So, yeah, there you go. You know, those are the two things of how to actually pass this exam. Um, you don't have a choice now. When it comes to next week, it's going to be updated. And you're going to need to know the new material that's there. So, hope that's helped. Hope you actually pass. Let me know. And... You know, if I know that the material that I'm actually showcasing is actually working for you, I can actually go in more in depth and, you know, hopefully I can get more people to pass. Anyway, thanks. Take care. Have a good one. Enjoy your bank holiday weekend. Goodbye.